Ace Podcast. This is the Super Co-op Squad video game podcast, episode 89. We did it again. It's the real 89. <laughs> Johnny did it again. Damn it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Super Co-op Squad video game podcast. I don't sound like Johnny Mac, but I am your host this week, Joshua Gerard, joined by my fellow co-host, Garrett Laney. How's it going? And That's it's it. just us. Yeah. We're doing a bro-op. Bro-op number two. Yeah. So Johnny Yak, uh, Johnny Yak, Johnny Mac is currently MIA right now, and we don't know where he is, but Garrett, you, you we, thought... We, we think Bowser took him. Yeah. You know, gave up Peach, and now rather than Mario's missing, Johnny Mac is missing. Yeah, but I don't really feel like going through a whole bunch of stuff to get, to to find them. I, I just think you know, it's fine. Yeah, he'll show up if he shows up, and yeah. Yep. We'll, and, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll see. We'll see if he shows up next week or if he's ever coming back. All right. So uh, it's just gonna be Garrett and I. So on today's episode, we're gonna be talking about some gaming announcements, such as uh, trailers for Doom and Red Dead Redemption Two. We'll be talking about diversity in pop culture, and of course, we're gonna have a, a new game unfold for our bro up episode. But first. We have our best and worst news of the week. Well, before that, you're spoiling things. Oh, that's right. That's what is, is different because I'm not hosting. I've only hosted one thing out of this 89 plus episodes that we've done. It's all right. So you're right. Terrible spoiler of the week. Hmm. Okay. Uh, in 1968, we're going way back. There was a movie about how apes ruled the world. It was indeed called Planet of the Apes the end of the movie that you find out as the viewer that that entire movie you are actually on planet earth they blew it up <laughs> they took over our planet and it doesn't look the same i like the pin that you're wearing i didn't notice that out that was a samus pin it is a samus pin yeah I, i'm wearing a, a smash brothers shirt that's just the, the smash brothers uh insignia from the uh 3ds and the uh, wii announcement back at that e3 the wii or the wii u we okay cool well i like it so that is our spoiler so now back to the the first topic best and worst of the week so are we still going worst first uh, you know what it rhymes <laughs> yeah that was exactly my reasoning last time worst first all right i'll let you go first all right so uh my worst news this week luigi's dead <laughs> Nintendo straight up killed off Luigi. That's your worst news. That's terrible. That's. I mean, it was pretty hilarious how it happened, but that then was, it was not, that was that was vicious <laughs> and graphic. And then they go off and show him like try to get back in his body. He's confused. He's just like, hmm. Yeah. He, he gets scared off. He literally meets death, and yeah. death takes his soul. Yeah, it's Luigi dead. R.I.P. Bro. You know, nineteen eighty six um, to. <laughs> Whatever. Well, Simon, if it wasn't for Simon, who knows what could have happened to his soul? That is true. Yeah. So, and uh, I was listening to another podcast, and they were saying that there was some people on Twitter that were tweeting Nintendo is like Luigi really dead? Like, is is he gone? Is he coming back? Like, what's what's going to happen? Uh, from what I hear, Nintendo UK did send out a tweet saying uh, Luigi is okay. <laughs> He'll be back. We don't know how or with what form. Maybe there'll be another uh, Smash video. Cool. So that's your worst news? That's my worst. Okay. So my worst news of the week is another update to MoviePass. And I know everyone, you're probably tired of hearing MoviePass, but there's a lot of out there, a lot of you out there that actually probably have a MoviePass subscription still. Or did. Or did. And not for long. So in addition to all the stuff we talked about recently about MoviePass having to borrow money and upping their price, uh, uh, up in their prices of their tickets, they made an additional change. So they're no longer upping their subscription price from ten to was it, it was fifteen or twenty dollars, something I, like that. Uh, but instead of upping that price range, now they're limiting you to what movies you can, how many movies you can see in a given month. So before it was uh, was it one movie per day. Uh, it had to be different every, every yep every every day f uh, for for the month's time frame but you couldn't see the same movie twice in a month but you were restricted to not being able to see movies during peak times not being able to see movies in IMAX or like as soon as they launched yeah, 3D yeah so now they've changed it where you can see it in certain peak times depending on the film and depending on the day or the weekend but you're now limited to a maximum of i believe 3 movies a month for $10 
it's it's rough because people have gotten so used to the service that they've had before and why they bought in the movie pass that now kind of stripping things away whether it's ra- raising the prices or limit limiting how many movies you can see but you know paying that same price that's that's not what got you in that's not why you subscribe to the service so this uh is definitely a, a bad thing and it could be if it's not already the beginning of the end <laughs> of movie pass. pass i mean you bring up a good point there where you as a consumer are spending ten dollars for a, a guaranteed movie a day for 30 days and now you're paying the same amount of money for three movies a month yep that's that's pretty terrible and with the the up and coming amc movie pass or whatever they uh, have a, the a list the a list yeah. i mean for 20 bucks you can see i think it's now four movies you can see any movie you want at any time like even though it's 20 dollars, you can see an additional movie and no restrictions imax dolby theater you know whatever you want and then you combine that with you know amc stubs pass exactly. or any, anything else that you want to do it's Rewards and all it's that. it's a phenomenal deal and i think a lot of people are probably going to bounce out of movie pass just because of that that heartache and that burn. Like, what a change. Because we talked about this in, in earlier episodes, and it, it was like Movie Pass had AMC grabbed by the by the cojones. <laughs> and it, it was like, well, if, if you're not going to support us, then we're not going to support you, AMC. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that that was a big thing. That, that The ball was in Movie Pass's court at mm-hmm. that time, but now things have flipped so much, <laughs> and Movie Pass can barely afford to to stay in existence that now it's amc that's just like well this is what we got and people are gonna go to that yeah to use continue with your metaphor now uh movie pass can't even get picked up on a team <laughs> yeah they're not even on the bench they're on the outside of the ball where they can't even join anybody <laughs> so it, it's bad news uh, unfortunately i think it's it's not going to be long until they either get bought out by somebody else or they'll just hang on along as as long as they can yeah, they'll go the blockbuster route. Uh, there's only one left in existence. <laughs> one movie pass left. <laughs> All right, so uh, we can't vote we for each other, it. so yeah, it's that's... kind of a neutral thing. All right. It's just news. This time our votes actually don't count. Johnny Mac can tell us uh, his vote next week. <laughs> um, or if he comes back next week. Yeah. Maybe maybe he ha- what happened to Luigi happened to him. Maybe death got a hold of him. Oh no! Not like real death, like video game death, like yeah, no, Ca- Castlevania death. Y- yeah. Ooh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh. <laughs> All right. <You> lose. <laughs> uh, best of the week. What's your best of the week, Gary? Uh, so uh, my best of the week is kind of a small thing, but I'm happy about it. Uh, the company Anchor, A N K E R. I, I don't think there's an any other way any other way to say it. Anchor. Anchor. Yeah. Uncare. yeah. Uh, anyway, this company is uh, designing an external battery for uh, the Nintendo Switch. And from what I hear, or what I'm, what I'm gathering, is it kind of has two options, where you can have a, a mode that literally is just kind of like uh, you plug in your Switch into a kind of like an outlet, mm-hmm. and it can do that for uh, approximately like 15 hours. That's okay. a pretty long time uh, so, for just the battery pack to sustain your switch for 15 hours. So, do you are you saying you plug the battery pack in to your switch and it's an additional? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's like you know time extended, okay. you know, kind of thing. Gotcha. Or uh, I believe in about 3.5 hours or something like that. I, I, I don't, can't exactly remember, but you can fully charge your switch. So you can okay. a just kind of go around with it, or b if you need a quick charge to. Do whatever you need without a battery pack. You can kind of, kind of like fast charge it. I imagine like a cell phone, you can either attach it to a portable charger, or you can have like a Mophie case where it's just plugged in all the time. And yeah, you just continue to use it as you're using the battery life. Ex- yeah. Okay. That Something like that. So uh, that I, I'm pretty happy about. That's the only reason why I really don't like taking my Switch in handheld mode, is because I'm worried about the battery life and. Uh, for a lot of games, that, that battery can drain pretty quickly. Yeah, especially with Smash coming out. I mean, you could play, what, three hours with Zelda, three and a half hours, yeah. and Smash Brothers is probably going to dominate the, the battery consumption oh, yeah. with everything that's entailed in there. So uh, looking to pick one of those up. Slightly bad news that I found out. Uh, they're charging about 90 bucks for these bad boys. Wow. 90 It's as much as an extra dock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty that's, much. That's like two Switch games. Or just if you, instead of buying two, just buy another Switch. <laughs> Practically, it's a reload. It's a third of the Switch cost, or 
I don't know. Yeah, so I mean, I imagine maybe there's going to be some other companies that might make a competitive price, or I don't know. Ninety bucks is kind of a lot, but for what it can do when Smash comes out, like I'm gonna need one. So better have flashy lights or something else attached to it. <laughs> like ninety bucks is a lot. It is. It is. I mean, I hope it doesn't blow up your Switch, like a Note Seven don't, don't battery. Even, don't even say that. Don't even <laughs> put that out there, man. Okay, I'm taking it back. Taking it back. All right. Anything else on that? that? That's my best. Cool. I mean, it's cool that they have that option. Uh, I'm sure there'll be other third parties that are going to create something like that and kind of compete. Yeah. We'll see how those last. All right. My best news of the week. Not not bad enough or good enough to be a speed run topic. It's way better than that. So those that know who Patrick Stewart is. I think everybody knows. Who Patrick I think Stewart everybody is. knows, too. In this upcoming news, he's going to reprise his role as Jean-Luc Picard. The best captain. I would agree. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The best captain. Um, He's going to be reprising his role in an upcoming Star Trek series that's going to come out sometime in the future uh, as the captain of, I don't know, I would guess it's going to be the Enterprise. I don't know what else. (laughs) Normandy. Would you take him over Shepard? Shepard. Yeah, of course, man. (laughs) So would I. So I so I'm I'm very excited by this. I'm as you guys have uh, known and kind of bashed me about. I do enjoy Star Trek better than Star Wars. I don't dislike Star Wars, but I yeah. grew up as a Trekkie. I grew up on on the Sci Fi Channel for the most part. Um, watched you know everything from you know the original Star Trek through uh, Next Generation, Voyager, Deep Space Nine. Uh, just a little bit of Enterprise. I did watch the most recent one, and and he is my favorite captain. And I think you know TNG is. W- arguably, you know, could be first or second as far as top-rated Star Trek. And I'm very excited to see how he's going to play this role. Uh, he is a lot older than he was when uh, TNG came out. Doesn't look a day older. I mean, depending on what you're <laughs> what you're talking about. I mean, you look at Logan, he was like, he was old. Yeah, but, I mean, that's that's movie <laughs> magic. They had to, to add makeup on to make him look older. Yeah, and even, you know, he reprised his role in... In X Men, when they came out with uh, Days of Future Past, and kind of brought back a long time fan base, where it's like, dang, he's Xavier again. So, yeah. just to only think about what's going to happen in the next Star Trek, I, I think is awesome. And I mean, he's going to be probably back at conventions, you know, at Comic Con or any other type of con, and you know, it's it's going to be, uh, I think, pretty big. I think it's going to draw a lot of people to understand where he came from, yeah. where early Star Trek was for for. Uh, people growing up right now that didn't watch Star Trek or didn't see the older ones and bring in people that who loved that older uh, version like myself into this new series because uh, the most recent Star Trek I wasn't really a fan of didn't really grasp me uh, Discovery yes um, so uh, we, we shall see uh, there's no announcement or name or anything like that we just know it's coming so 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 far all we know is that there's going to be a new series and John Luke Picard is in it yes uh, I mean based just on that it has to be canon yeah, well, yeah. Most but, mostly, all the Star Treks are s- somewhat canon. So, like, is it going to be a continuation of TNG? Is it like, like, are we going to see uh, Data and, and LaForge? Oh man! Like, okay, for sure, if they're going to get Patrick Stewart reprising his role as Jean Luc Picard, <laughs> it's not that far to get uh, uh, Gordy back. <laughs> yeah, anybody number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, Jonathan Frakes. Oh man, dude's awesome. Xanatos. That's <laughs> pretty much what he looks like. All right, so he does the voice. Does he? Yeah. yeah. Ah, it's been so long. Half the cast of TNG does a voice for uh, in Gargoyles. Gargoyles. That's uh, awesome. Uh, I, for- I forgot her name. Um, Demona. Yeah. Well, I didn't forget her name. I forgot the Star <laughs> Trek character's name. I don't. Know. It's been it's been a while. Uh, 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 she, she's the one that can like tap into to other people's emotions and all that. In TNG. Yeah, in TNG. Um, her in her in number I, one. I know you're talking about, she, but yeah, she voices. I, I, I forget her name. It's it's De- Deanna Troy. Deanna Troy. I I'm not even gonna. You know what? I'm yeah. not even gonna guess because if I butcher it, people are gonna say I'm not uh, a fan at all. Cool. So <laughs> uh, that's my best news. Once again, we can't vote. So the next person that comes back and joins us, where we're a, a full squad again, we'll we'll allow that person to vote. 
Cool. So that is best and worst of this week. If you have any thoughts or opinions or you want to let us know what your best and worst is, uh, you can hit us up on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, also, we apologize. Our current email is down. We're having some uh, trouble, difficulties troubleshooting system. difficulties with our email. But just to throw it out there, it's contact at scspodcast.net. It'll be up and running again. Yes, it will. All righty. Since, since we're doing a bro-op, uh, we're, we're taking out the games, mm-hmm. well, most of the games. We're, 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 we're taking out the majority of it, but we're adding a game. <laughs> so came up with this idea. Where we're going to play, a, you know, Garrett's going to do one, and I'm going to do one, 20 questions. So I believe everybody knows how 20 questions work. The person that's guessing has to... Correctly guess what the person's thinking. Yeah, I said that. Questions. Yeah, you know, you know me and Dick's describing it's, games. It's, it's, it's terrible. So... I guess, Gary, you decide that I'm going to go first Yes. as far as the guesser. Right. And, you, and you're and you going to give me a game or think of a game, and I have 20 questions to uh, try to figure out that I game. thought it was the other way, that it would be your game first because it's your thing. Okay. Well, whatever whatever you want to do. So <laughs> do you want to guess the game first or do you want me to guess the game I first? I will guess the game first. Okay. So this is your pick. Okay. Yes. So I have my game in mind. Uh no one's going to be able to see it, but I'm going to count with my fingers. So you have 20 questions to guess. Um, now... We should make a quick stipulation. So if you want to guess the game, does that count as a question or is it like sudden death, do or die? You guess the game wrong. It's I, over. I would say it counts as a question. Okay. So if you want to say, is it this game? Is it this game? Is it this game? That's just a question. Yeah. That, off? That, yeah. That's a question. Okay. Off. Okay. I we'll keep that, it at that. That's a good way to do it. Okay. Uh, right. This is new to us. So sudden death rules would, uh, would be terrible. <laughs> All right. Let All right, me. Yes or no question. Yes or no. Okay. Okay. Uh, is it a fighting game? Is it a fighting game? It is not a fighting game. Okay. All right. <laughs> you thought I was going to pick a fighting game because I'm a big fighting game fan? Well, no, just somewhere to start. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's probably not. And no, it might be Smash, but no, it's not. <laughs> okay. Is there experience and uh, like experience points in this game? Kind of like, like in an RPG type of way? Yes. Kill an enemy, you yeah, gain. Yeah, level up. Do you level up in this game, I guess, is the best way to do it? No. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, does this game have vehicles in it that you can uh, that you can like use drive or yeah in that pilot sense or whatever? No. Okay, interesting. Where are we going? That is the question. Is it a puzzle game? No. Okay. So so far that's what. First. That's four questions. Okay. All right. You got sixteen more. <laughs> hmm. Is, does this game have a uh, female protagonist? No. Ooh, okay, <laughs> I'm striking out here. You're you're asking like the the core questions to I'm narrow it down. Trying to get there. I know you're going by genre, and I know I know where you're going. I know I like where your head's going at. It, it just to help you out. It is a game you know. I'm not going <laughs> to pick like a really deep cut that you might not know, like Naughty Bear. Okay. All right. So you got five. Is it produced by EA? So, um, produced or like published, or did EA? Yeah, sorry, have... yeah, published. I guess would be the better one. No. Okay, so no sports games. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not the only ones that make sports True. games. True. Sure. Hmm. Okay. Is it based off of any, uh, I guess, franchise or, or pop culture? Uh, kind of rephrase the okay. question. Okay. Is this game based off of a movie and or book? Like, I guess, n- another type of media. Does, it co- does this game come from another type of media? Like a non-video game, you mean, yes. essentially? Yes. No. Oh, okay. So okay. kind of to recap your question, it is from a video game. Okay. It's not like Start, a... Started out as a video game. And, yeah. Okay. Is it Jack and Daxter? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it's not. Feel you? I mean, you can ask your questions how you want, but no, it's not <laughs> Jack and Dexter. Striking out here. Hmm. I got nothing. I got no yeses so far. Have you not gotten any? No, you haven't gotten no, any. No yeses. <laughs> I've, I've asked quite a few questions. They're, they can be just as helpful. Yeah. You need like a little bit of a, a guide? No, no. I, I feel that would, that would tarnish. Well, like, like you can think of like platform... System type of ex- no. if it's exclusive okay. genre, yeah, de- like developer, like Western, Eastern. You can kind of narrow it down a little bit more, like time frame of release. Okay, 
to okay. kind of help you out. Yeah. Thank you. Um, ooh. Ooh. Okay. Has this game been... Okay, now stick with me. Okay. Has this game been uh, a PlayStation Greatest Hits, a GameCube Player's Choice? <laughs> Any of those I, kind I, of I, like... So kind of a... Um, before Game of the Year, it was like the... The, the must get game, like the hits I guess. the yes, hits yeah. kind of categories yeah. it has been in that category Ooh, all right got got something got one i actually like that question thank you thank you now i guess to kind of narrow that down is it on a sony platform no okay that's 10 yeah, yeah halfway getting there. there getting there is it legend of zelda ocarina of time <laughs> no <laughs> It would have been a better way to ask that question rather than to kill a question. No, it is not. I thought that was the first game that popped in my mind. I said, hell no. That's too easy. <laughs> all right. All right. How many is that so far? So that far? is 11. Okay. All right. Forgive me, listeners. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. It's a new thing. Is it a survival horror game? <sighs> I'll, I'll, I'll help. It's, it's in the horror genre okay it's 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 a it's a, sp- <laughs> it's a spooky game a spooky game spooky game it was a hit and it's not on playstation yes get some more yeses now <laughs> <laughs> was that a player's choice or the best seller did that even t- okay all right hold on i'm getting ahead of myself now um <laughs> are you asking a, a question to 20 questions <laughs> is this game on the gamecube yes yeah, that's that's how you narrow a question down. <laughs> Jack and Daxter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, all right. It's a spooky game. It was a a greatest hits. Well, GameCube, so player's choice. Mm-hmm. Those are your those are your three big narrow downers so far. I want to take a stab at it, but I feel like I, I, I got so I got a couple more questions to burn. Yeah, is it Resident Evil Four? No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I feel good about that one. Well, you know, there's an easier way to narrow that down. If it's a Res- there's you know how many Resident Evil games are on the GameCube? There's like five no, of them. It has to be a player's choice also. That's true. There's, a, there's actually been a few spooky games. All right. You have 14. You got six more. All right. Hmm. Okay. Here's one. Okay. Uh, does this game, does this game's character... Sorry, let me rephrase. Is this game's character featured in Super Smash Brothers? Yes. <laughs> Is it Metroid Prime? No. Ouch. <laughs> That's 16. You got four more. You count Metroid Prime as a spooky game? Well, like Echoes was kind of creepy. Yeah. And it was player's choice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, running out. Running out of time. Yeah, you know it's on GameCube. Uh-huh. It's a spooky-ish type of game. You know it's a player's choice hits, which means it had that yellow yellow tab on the uh-huh. on the top, uh-huh. and the the there's a video game character got it in this game that's got in it. Super Smash Brothers. Got it. You think you got it? I think you thought, I got you, it. thought you had it on the last one. I thought, but I got it this time. Okay, you guessing the game or you guessing the game? game? Okay, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> I like to solve the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Garrett. It's Luigi's Mansion. It is Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it is Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> Good job. That Thank was you. question number seventeen. Yeah, it took me a while. Yeah, all right. So it's let's, all right. let's see if you can guess my game later on in the show. Yes, we're gonna save that for later. And so. less than seventeen questions. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna try to beat your score. Nice job, Garrett. All right. All righty, guys. We're gonna talk about some games. We had some gaming news this week. We had two nice reveal trailers, and then we had uh, an interesting news break from Bethesda. Actually, we got two things to talk about from Bethesda. But first, we're going to talk about the big one. We're not going to talk about Smash Brothers. No, no, no. No, that had the director earlier this week. Yeah, that last week. Yeah, that's that's something. We'll save that news for later. All right. So, uh, Rockstar has now revealed its first official gameplay footage for Red Dead Redemption Two, and I think this is something that everyone has been longing to see. We thought we we're going to see real gameplay at E3. We didn't. We got we got a trailer. We got some nice behind the scenes peeks at it and the game is coming out later this year and now we actually have some cool gameplay so um you know this game still takes place in a time where the 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 outlaw 
times are ending, and it's kind of streamlining into what we would know as modern day at that time. You're playing as Arthur Morgan. He's a senior gun in the Val, uh, Vanderling gang, and there's a lot of cool new uh, things that are into this game. So first, I just want to highlight, are you a good guy or a bad guy? Like, like you're in a gang. You do gang-like things, but you have the ability to make moral choices throughout the game. I'm seeing it as kind of like a, a Robin Hood kind of thing. You are in a gang. You are doing crime, but it's to to kind of help a community, or it can be to help a community. I, I do think it's one of those moral games where it's your choice. You could do good. You could do bad. Uh, but I think <clears throat> genuinely it's... it's uh, you and your ragtag gang are are kind of you know robbing from the rich stealing from the poor you're really trying to fight this this conversion of of uh, the industrial era mm-hmm. yeah and what i like about uh being able to make somewhat it's, it's not gonna be like mass effect where it's like you make you know this specific moral choice or this moral choice but if someone is stuck in a bear trap you have the option to save them if you'd like, or you just leave them there. Or if someone is hanging from a cliff, uh, or someone's committing suicide, if that's in the game, you know, you have the ability where you can, you know, assist in, you know, saving them or the bullet in them. Yeah, or that you can end their misery because they can't make it up on their own. So you have those type of choices that uh, Rockstar said will make an impact in how the game is. Uh, play. They even mentioned that there was a scene where there was a woman standing in the street and she was looking at you as the main character is, you killed my brother. You killed my pa. <laughs> yeah. So how does that portray in the storyline? Is someone now going to put a bounty on your head? Is someone going to seek revenge? Do you always have to kind of keep your eyes and wits about you as you're going through a town? Uh, it, it's R- Rockstar is doing what Rockstar does best and they have created a living world. Uh, they they've done it again time and time again, but now it's it's even bigger than it was back in the first Red Dead Redemption. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, uh, the 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 world feels so much more alive. The people that you're talking to have their it, it honestly seems kind of Westworldian, where they have their own kind of uh, lives and their own routines throughout the day, and uh, it's it's really just fascinating how Rockstar can do this. Yeah, and it's not just you reacting to the world, it's the world is reacting to you and what you do in it. And Rockstar has created another beautifully, you know, what we're probably going to consider a masterpiece. You just look at what they're able to do with the scenery, with the voice act casting, with just the motion capture, and it just all looks so fresh and so clean. Uh, mm. in a, in a <laughs> clean, clean, in a dirty world. Uh, so it's, it's something that I think a lot of people just can't wait to get their hands on. Yeah, uh, there, there's a couple of interesting things I'm I'm still curious about. I think they showed off just a lot of the single player, mm-hmm. and it was kind of interesting how like when your gang moves around, you set up a camp, and you kind of do missions to help out the camp. It you know free a water supply kind of place, or maybe get uh, rob a general store or something like that to get supplies or, or whatever. And you, it, it's kind of like a persona thing where you can kind of like level up your your uh, social links with your gang members mm-hmm. and go on exclusive missions and probably you know kind of like unlock some things for uh, get some rewards in the game that way but uh i'm curious if maybe if they do well obviously they will go into a multiplayer online thing mm-hmm. uh very popular back in red dead redemption if you guys your gang your friends can set up a, a campsite and and kind of be able to uh, a home base and all that kind of stuff. Uh, will we have our a shared one? Will I have mine when you join my game? And then, you know, you just kind of mess around in my base. You know, it's still questions that I'm sure they'll answer later with more reveal trailers, but just something to think about. Yeah, and one thing that, and you had mentioned it kind of earlier on in the topic is as far as, you know, camps and, you know, kind of moving around, uh, they said that virtually every new area you're going to be able to uh, on on cover or discover is you can set camp there and then based on that you can you know herd for for cattle you're hunting for food you're cooking food you can uh, I guess you could say shoot the shit <laughs> <laughs> as far as tell stories listen to stories and that's where you kind of said that you kind of gain not necessarily experience but you gain a little bit more rapport with the people that are in your camp you can play you know other games and i'm sure they'll bring back some of the classic ones like liars dice and poker yeah, yeah. Uh, and they'll probably bring some new ones back and it, it's it's nice to see that that 
will probably entangle into some type of storyline, but that's how they did it back then. You uh, got to a er- new area, and it's almost like Dark Souls meets you know Final Fantasy 15, where you go to a new area, here's your bonfire, you camp out, and now you're just eating, cooking a meal, and you know... Aha! I've got a new <laughs> recipe. <laughs> We're eating some deer today. <laughs> um, and that'll be fun. And then going into some gameplay changes, there's some some dramatic and some that are just... Like nice, like if you end up, you know, shooting a deer or a rabbit or some type of cattle, you see the your character actually dragging the deer over his shoulder, or it's mounted on on your horse, and you're taking yeah. that that uh, prize uh, back to your camp. They they also mention that your horse uh, with the saddlebags holds uh, more inventory. So if you want to switch guns, like your your horse is where you go to do that. Uh, if you're hunting for animals, which by the way, I did see a bow and arrow. Very mm-hmm. happy about that. Yes, uh, but if you are hunting animals and you 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 know take a shot and it doesn't kill them, you now have to track them, or you can track them. They'll leave a blood trail, maybe broken twigs and that kind of thing. You literally are like a hunter tracking these animals, tracking down this game. Yeah, and this is uh, what adds to the fidelity of not only just how people actually did things in in the Wild West, uh, but just it adds a different style to gameplay. Because I didn't really play. Any Red Dead? Was there a tracking system in Red Dead Redemption? Uh, there was. It, it was. It, it wasn't as like uh, in, intuitive. I think. I think it was like you're following uh, footprints or something like that, and that kind of goes on your mini map. Uh, gotcha. Kind of compass thing. It, Almost it, like it a mission. Anything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You have your little waypoint, and you're just following tracks that yes. show up on the map, rather than you actually looking for prints or blood stains. A- precisely. Kind of like at the beginning of God of War. In PS4, when you're with a trace and you're hunting that boar, <laughs> kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, the boar, not the deer, the Correct. boar, yeah, the boar, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, some other uh, things that they've added is uh, gunplay. You know, it's a little bit more uh, tight, a little bit more sophisticated. They said that you know you'll be able to feel the recoil. Um, I don't know if that meant by you know vibration on the controller or your character actually recoils based on the type of weapon he's using. You know, you know, Will Smith with a noisy cricket flew 50 feet. So if you have a pretty heavy shotgun blast you'll probably you know not be able to you know heavy uh, machine gun (laughs) not be able to just shoot off shells like one after the other yeah and uh there's a lot more detail in in the fisticuffs when you're actually fighting and we see in the the beginning of the trailer that your character gets thrown out of a bar you know probably from a fight and then you have someone just kind of creep up out of the bar like ready to fight you and you're you know you fall in the mud you're covered in mud it's raining in the background so just the attention to detail is is so pure and just excellent and then there's a crowd of people coming out of the neighboring stores or buildings to like stick out on the street and they're like looking to see what happens which is how it is in all the movies yeah um i'm sure i'm sure you'll have a uh, a shootout yeah a showdown yeah where it's just like you know i can't whistle you do the whistle Wow, wow. I don't know if that's going to come out very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's high. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of stuff like that um, is going to be featured in the game. I think one of the things that's going to be really cool is the new, um, they're calling it the Dead Eye system, where if you have like a, you know, a six shooter and it's almost like in slow mo, kind of like in Max Payne, but you'll, you'll aim at a target, you'll, you'll shoot the trigger, you'll aim at another target, shoot them, and then you'll do that up to however many times. And then in real time, when it shoots back, it's just like pop, 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 like you're uh, slapping the trigger. See, they're saying that's new, but I'm pretty sure that was in, uh, in the first one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was in Red Dead Redemption. I think they're changing up how either how it works or any any other type of features built it. in with it. They yeah. they say it's a new system, even though it's kind of piggybacking on the old well, one. Well, maybe because I'm thinking Dead Eye was more just maybe maybe it's been a while since I played it, but maybe it just slowed down the the system so you could better aim your shot, kind of like focus time. Or something like that, where this kind of you you set your targets, you mark your targets, and then you know fire away. Yeah, and then it's just automatically based on where you aim versus like maybe one target with rapid fire. Yeah, cool. Um, anything else you want to talk about with Red Dead? I mean, it was it was an awesome trailer, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more. And then in the beginning, they're like gameplay part one. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, okay. I, I guess I thought further in that same video would be oh part two, the campaign or or story or something like or that. Multiplayer. But it's going to be a whole another video released at some whole another time, probably next month. And do you like how they? They're doing that. Um, it, it doesn't bother me. It, it's the the presentation of it is pretty like well informed, and you know they give you a lot to look at and a lot to think about, and they show off a lot of what they're doing. So I think I think it's a good way to do it. I would like to, it to be more frequent, 
So I'm hoping it's not the next videos next month. I'm, you know, and they just do a video until a, a month until the game comes out. But uh, I'd like it to be uh, more, more uh, frequent. Yeah, I don't mind it showing, you know, part one because you know there's other stuff to show off. But now you're talking, okay, wh- how long do I have to wait? And is it something that it's going to be, you know, very soon? Is it something that, you know, it's going to be next month? Yeah. I mean, the game releases in October. I think it's October 21st, if I'm not mistaken. So you're talking two months to show us whatever else you're going to show us. So. Yeah. I mean, you're on the heels of Spider-Man, so you know you, you have to bring it out before the attention drifts towards Spider-Man. Granted, it's Red Dead; it's going to have its own attention, but yeah. you you don't want to share that spotlight with somebody else. So I recommend doing it earlier than later. Cool. So uh, moving on to the second part out of three, uh, we're not going to talk about this very long, but Bethesda released uh, some more exclusive gameplay footage at QuakeCom for uh, Doom Eternal. They're not calling it Doom Two because it's. I mean, it looks like it's a sequel, but it's. It's another Doom game. Uh, Doom 2016 uh, was my favorite action game of that year. Now currently on Game Pass. Yes. If you guys haven't played Doom uh, on Xbox One, PS4, and I think it's on you know PC and Steam now, uh, definitely check it out. It's a it's a fun. It's also on Switch. Yeah. Yes, it is on Switch <laughs> too. It, it's fun. It's it's gory. It's bloody hell. You know, pun intended. It's it's crazy and it's it's the proper reboot or a reimagination of an old franchise that you don't really see very often where, you know, developers will bring an old game back and it doesn't get the shine. It, you know, it still keeps a lot of things fresh while going back on older stuff. And, and that's what it does in this game. And they added a couple of new gameplay features. They added uh, this new, like, Predator blade <laughs> yeah. on your arm. And then you have this, like, jetpack, like, Side bomb cannon. Can- arm cannon thingamajiggy. Predator thing. Yes. It, it looks just totally like Predator. <laughs> and then you have this, like, grapple hook where you can launch it out to enemies and then you will actually launch towards them. So it adds a completely new mechanic Yeah, I was going to ask if that was in the first game. It was not. Not at all. Okay. So that that's interesting. Uh, was the, because uh, I saw a couple, like, swinging on pipes and stuff. Yeah, so that's another thing, too, where you're like, doing things and yeah parkour (laughs) and games like uncharted or tomb raider where you're actually swinging on different things that are highlighted in the environment which you couldn't do you can climb in this game yeah you see you see him scaling in the elevator that reminded me of gargoyles yeah so you you (laughs) couldn't do any of those things in the previous game it was just pretty much you know gun and shoot okay so a lot of more movement options yes a lot of more traversing the the level yes and even uh, you have this little almost like a dash boost like uh in the exoskeletons in uh advanced warfare for call of duty it almost seems like a depend well okay with the information that these movement options are not in the doom 2016 Mm -hmm. it almost seems like this is going to be more of kind of like an open world game uh yes i did get a little bit of that feeling when it came to you know kind of traversing hell uh the space station uh not so much just because when you're traversing that portion of hell or wherever they were at it it wasn't as much open area, but you did unlock certain doors after going into a room or going to an area. You came back. There was a different monster there, and then a new path opened up. So I'm curious on how much back and forth, not necessarily Metroidvania, but you end up probably revisiting a couple areas, seeing some new enemies. You still have the map, which you cannot have Doom without a map. So I'm glad that they kept the map in there, and you know it's... It's just the the execution moves are different. Just even with the blade, it's just it's just awesome. If you like violent, like action games, this is something to definitely check out. I have not uh, played the Doom 2016. Uh, I did download it on Game Pass, so might check that out and uh, see if that that excites me for Doom Eternal. They uh, you, he collected uh, Doom guy collected a one up in the in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you're gonna have lives or if that's just kind of a nod. Even the Marine soldiers in the beginning of that trailer, that was from the original Doom. Okay. Uh, and you didn't have those enemies in Doom 2016. So uh, I'm very excited to see what other nods. Uh, even the health vials. You didn't have uh, like those type of health vials where they look like the old school game. <laughs> so I'm hoping they're going to have some more like Doom secrets. All the uh, callbacks and stuff. Yeah, I'm very excited for as that. As long as the little, little Doom guys there, you know, we can like you know do the, do the pound fist thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then uh, the last uh, news uh, in this segment, uh, Bethesda, again, with Fallout 76, has a new gameplay twist uh, that they're adding in 
it's primarily to reduce the griefing and you know trolls. The, and yeah, all of that in the game. So just uh, general assholes. <laughs> uh, briefly, Gary, go over uh, the description of uh, griefing or a griefer in video games. Uh, just someone that's just trying to. Bit, you know, troll you, mess with you, trying to upset you. And, you know, we're getting, using the gameplay mechanics. Yeah, and, and a lot of these uh, different types of shooters is is killing you, whether it be friendly fire, you're on the same team, or you're just you're building your house and then someone just invades your world and just takes you out. Uh, you know, you lose your loot, you lose whatever you have in the, yeah. in, in the game, depending on the game. So th- I, I really like where they're doing it, so uh, I'm going to take a sec to go into it. So... This new uh, gameplay, I don't think they have a name for it yet specifically, but uh, you all, we all know this is going to be an online game. You'll be able to interact with other players in your world or in their world or in the, in the space. In the, sh- in the shared world. It, yes. It's on Thank the you. server. Thank you. Yeah. Shared world. So players can shoot other players in a non-PVP manner. And rather than the player taking whatever damage it would normally, the player is going to take some type of small or minimal damage. Essentially, you're going to be alerted that somebody's shooting you. And with that, the player that gets shot has the option to engage, which essentially it's fight. (laughs) Or you can choose to ignore, which gives you the option where you want to be passive, like, no, I don't want to fight you. I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to have a chance of either, you know, risking it all, whatever I got, or, yeah. you know, I'm busy right besting now. you. Yes. Yeah. Especially because there's a building mechanic in this game, too. And so if if the player chooses to ignore, uh, you still have the ability to get shot and potentially killed. But if you actually ignore and the uh, other person ends up killing you, a bounty will be placed on their head and they'll be, you know, quote, wanted for murder. And what this does it, you know, that player that's wanted, now the killer, I'll just dub that, they get zero XP from the kill, they don't get your loot, and now other players in the shared universe can hunt them down and earn experience points because it's now a bounty. Now, the higher the level the killer is, the more potential bounty rewards one can reap for killing them. And... Also, the killer will be marked as a red target on other players' maps, so that way they know and they will get alerted. Hey, there's a murder in your in your <laughs> camp in your in your town. Get but the, the neighborhood watch, right? <laughs> You'll see a sign. <laughs> you know. uh, but the killer will not be able to see any hunters that get that notification or where they are on that map. So it adds a new kind of dangerous style of gameplay where you have to kind of tread carefully based on your actions. Yeah, don't be a jerk. So what? Uh, what do you think about that? This, this is a great way to handle it. It, it doesn't baby the player where it, it, uh, it's like, oh, they didn't want to fight. Okay, my bullets, no damage kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And instead, it uses, it, it uses the world that it's in, the setting that we're in, and is able to turn, it, uh, turn this, I don't want to say experience, but the situation into a mechanic of the game. And I think that's a brilliant way to do this and to reward players to hunt down these, you know, griefers or these, you know, trolls or jerk players, that that's just incentive. Like people are hoping that there's going to be people, uh, you know, those kind of jerks out there like that, uh, just for the experience and and loot. Yeah, and I, I totally agree. And there's other games. It could be fighting games. It can be other games, uh, competitive shooters, where you know, trolling or more specifically, rage quitting. You know. On a match, especially, you know, when you're losing, there have been some type of penalties where, you know, you don't gain experience, you lose experience, you're banned from the server where you can't play uh, online for X amount of minutes or X amount of games. But you can't really do that in a shared universe like this game or in like a Destiny you know, yeah. there's they don't there's no mechanic that specifically will punish players for doing evil deeds or are or, or, uh, trolling or mischievous. So Bethesda has found a way where, it, as you point out, it integrates it into the game as a mechanic or system. Where I mean, if that was a real world, there are people that are you know just hunting and trolling and just killing people for their loot. But now they can still do that, but there's a risk slash reward. If they're doing it for fun, now you're running the risk where someone can come and kill you take your loot they gain experience for yeah. it and now it's now it's almost like a, a pvp invasion type where <laughs> yeah. you know it's okay now someone's hunting you now do you sit there and fight them and try to shoot them because clearly now you have to engage or do you try to run away and figure it out so i, I think i think it's awesome that they came up with i, I don't want to say it's a solution but yeah. it's it's a it's an alternate way to 
deal with it. deal with a problem that you know punishes players who aren't comfortable with the game they don't know about it or that are just you know people are level 80 and you're level 12 and now yeah. you have to suffer because you just don't have the strength to kill them yeah that it's that it's definitely a good way to do it uh that's a, a curious way to do it because if you are high enough level if you are like level 80 and you know you got 30s and 20s coming after you can you still defend yourself against them do like is is there i don't want to say benefit but is there anything that comes out of I don't know, surviving the bounty? <laughs> <laughs> like you killed everyone that's around you. So like, I mean, I, I would imagine that you would probably, I don't know, maybe you don't get any experience. I would points. imagine not because what would be the point of that? That would actually in, probably entice people to be jerks. <laughs> right. You know, I'm not going to get it from effect. killing you, but everyone that's out <laughs> to get me, I'm going to take your experience points. No, that's a good point. Um, it'll be interesting. I'm sure there'll be something else. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there'll be an option to turn on or off the ability to, you know, be passive or not engage and make it worse, you know, 100% of the well, time. From what I hear, there is an, an option to kind of display on your name whether you're passive. Like, uh, something about being like a pacifist. So so other players know that, okay, you, you don't want to fight right now. Like, I, don't, don't even bother. Yeah, I, I do believe there's some sort of option like that uh, that will let other players know that you're, you're not interested in PvP, uh, which is... Pretty pretty good because sometimes you know you, you don't want to. You, sometimes you just want to explore the world or, or whatever, get some loot. I want to be by myself. Leave me alone. Exactly. So I'm just here to escape the real world. With <laughs> and now I got these same problems up here in this digital world. Big people police. harassing me. Yeah, taking over my town. So that, that's a. I, I think Fallout seventy six is is going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be really good, and they have their ways of kind of dealing with. Uh, these these griefers yeah and i'm sure that if this ends up being successful or a positive spin on the gameplay i'm sure other developers and other game studios will maybe integrate something like that uh for them cool so uh if you guys have any feedback for us or you got any thoughts and opinions uh you can try to shoot us an email if it, if we get it up and running again contact at scspodcast.net or hit us up on twitter or on facebook all righty, guys. It's my turn to play 20 questions. I have my game. Let's see if Joshua can figure it out in less than 17. You got to keep count. I'm not going to keep count. Yeah, yeah. And be honest. I will. Don't cheat me. So I have a little bit of an advantage because one of the podcasts I listen to is Game Scoop. You know, it's an IGN podcast, and they play 20 questions every episode. So I get to hear, like, questions that they ask and how uh, they narrow yeah, it down. Yeah. So that's kind of where I, I got the idea from. Shout out to Damon out there running, this, running the, the Omega Cups. I am ready. We'll see how I do. I, right. I don't remember the last time I played 20 questions. It'll probably be pretty easy. Well, it depends. If it's, like, a Final Fantasy game or something, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right, you got your game? I got my game. Say, okay, let's go. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I go first. Yes. Okay. Is this game exclusive to its platform? If it's a Nintendo game, is it exclusive to Nintendo? Is it a console exclusive? How about that? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. So it's a console exclusive? Yes. Okay. I got a yes on the first try. Yeah? Yeah, you did. Is this game on a Nintendo platform? Yes, it is. Okay. Is this game on a CD-based media? Does it come on a disc? Yes. So the game did come out on a disc form? Yes, it did. Okay. Getting all the yeses so far. Is this game post GameCube? So like Wii, Wii U, and, and up? Uh no. No. Okay. Is this is this game on a handheld system? No. Okay. We're at five so far? Yep. Is this on a GameCube? No. 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 Yeah. It's not post so it didn't come out on GameCube, yeah. but it's a CD-based media. You asked the question. I answered it. You misled yourself. What are you talking about? <laughs> what disc-based media is past GameCube, or it's not past GameCube, but it's not GameCube? You look, man, I, it's yes or no. Nintendo 64 is cartridge. <laughs> GameCube came out next. You said it. it's not after GameCube, but it's on a disc. You asked the question, sir. It sounds like you're trolling me, Garrett. Nope. Is there a system I'm missing? No, there's not that I'm aware of. <laughs> but you may have asked a question that may have misled you. I don't know. I might have got a misled answer. So just to recap, this game did not come out 
after the GameCube that era. That is correct. But it is on a disc-based media. It means it's on a disc you can put into a Nintendo system. No. That, that's what I meant when I said disc-based media, and you said yes. Yes, because it is on a disc, or it has been on a disc, not a Nintendo one. Yeah, that's what, that's what I meant. But Look, bro, you, you asked the question, it's yes or no? I can only say yes or no. But you're at six. You still got time. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Just be careful with your questions. Maybe you're getting too much detail. No. But you said it was on a Nintendo console. Yes, I did. I don't, I don't know. I, th- I think you're jiving me on this one. Is this game made by Nintendo? Made or developed by Nintendo? No. Okay. Is this game... Hmm. Does this game have multiplayer? Yes. Okay. Okay. Is it a fighting game? No. Okay. Do you shoot guns in this game? Yes. Is it a first-person shooter? Yes. Okay. Is that 10? That's uh, 11. Okay. The first-person shooter on a Nintendo console that you said was a console exclusive on a disc-based media, but it's not on, not on GameCube, it's not on Wii, it's not on Wii U. No. It's no. Not, not on any of those consoles. No. Is it on the Wii? No. No, it's not. But it's on a Nintendo system. Yes. That, has, that plays discs. No. Well, that, that's what I was saying in the beginning. No, you asked if it was on the disc. I said yes. Well, you got to lead it down to the question. If it, it's, The first question was, is it on a Nintendo console? It's, you're asking me yes or no questions, man. Yeah, is it on a Nintendo console? Yes. Is, yes. It on, is it on a disc on a Nintendo console? That's that, Now, that's a way more specific question to which I can say no. It's incredibly more specific. That's, that's what I was con- concerned that's with. That's what you wanted, but that's not what you said. <laughs> so that obviously means it's on a cartridge on a Nintendo console. I'm not, you don't. Yep. Yeah, that's what you're saying. You didn't have to ask. That's not a question. That's not a part of the questions. Is this on <laughs> Nintendo 64? Yes. Okay. That uh, is 12, I believe. Is this game made by Rare? Yes, it is. Is it GoldenEye? Yes, it is. <laughs> you're <a> punk, dude. <laughs> you're a punk. Which has been released on the Xbox 360. GoldenEye, I don't recall being released on the Xbox 360. It was a reimagining or like a reboot or something like that. Are you talking about... Um, like Quantum of Solace? Or? No, no, no. It was, it was, there was a GoldenEye that was remade. I'm pretty sure it was on the 360. I don't think it was GoldenEye, because the actual GoldenEye game that came out again was, was on the Wii. It wasn't the exact same game. But they, okay. Because yeah. remember, it did come with, the, uh, um, I think, a gold controller, a gold classic controller or something. Okay, that might have been uh, my, my confusion, because I do remember it being on the disc. I could have swore it was 360, but then I started questioning, did it come out on the Wii? It did. There, there was a Wii version of GoldenEye. I just don't recall there being specifically like that GoldenEye on the 360. Yeah, GoldenEye 007 was on the Wii, so that was my fault. It was, it was on a disc past GameCube. Uh, technically. <laughs> <laughs> How many questions was that? Uh, that was uh, at the end, I think, uh, 15. All right. Well, I beat you on that you one. You did beat Well, it's the first time that we're doing this, so you get in the hang of it. Maybe if... Johnny likes it when he comes back. Maybe, maybe if we'll he comes back. If, yeah, if he comes, maybe we'll squeeze if it in there. Bowser ever lets him go. All right, twenty questions. Uh, maybe you guys uh, listening can send us some suggestions, and then we'll use that in future episodes. So let us know. All right, we're gonna go into our core topic. It's a, uh, it's a little bit of a, uh, I don't want to say it's a sensitive topic, but it's definitely a, con- uh, a topic of controversy that has been uh, floating around, especially in the recent couple months. So we're going to be talking a little bit about diversity in pop culture, particularly uh, pertaining to movies and TV shows now. Uh, some of this deriving from you know characters from comic books or older uh, forms of media. In recent months, there has been some controversy about the changing of characters in upcoming movies and TV shows. These creative changes spark fans uh, out crying about how they feel about their favorite or beloved character, whether that has a a new look, a new style, uh, a change to their appearance, their personality, you know, just the character. There's something different about the character that's not true to when it came out or, or the origins, lore. Or, yeah. yeah, there you go. Origins. Uh, that's a good word. So um, one that we'll briefly talk about, we have a couple, but the one that's of uh, recent news, it's possible that Idris Elba 
is in talks to be the next 007 agent, uh, James Bond. The reason why this may or may not spark controversy is uh, Idris Elba is an African-American male, and James Bond has always been Caucasian. Yeah. And we've seen different examples, which we'll go to in a second, of uh, people um, sharing their thoughts and opinions, for good or not so much, about you know how they feel that character should be portrayed. So just to talk about Idris Elba as a potential James Bond uh, agent, what are your thoughts on that? I think that's pretty cool. I like Idris Elba a lot. Uh, I like him as an actor. Uh, and as a kind of a super spy, I think it would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, something else you want to say? No. Uh, as far as being the super spy, 007, I-, I can understand why people could be upset about it. It's not so much that, oh, they got a black person. It's it's more of like, this character has already been made. This character's already been created. Uh, uh, he is, like, in the books and in the, the novels and everything, he is Caucasian. He's, that's, that's the character. Um I think you could have easily have just made another agent maybe and just made that Idris and be have Idris Elba be the new guy, the new agent, maybe ha- make 007 the code, uh the code name rather than the 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 spy. The the name? Yeah. Yeah, 007 is this person, not like now it's James Bond every time. Yes, exactly. But, well, well based like on more that of a mantle. Well, I I it's, I'm not truly like into the lore of you know any you know 007, but isn't the number based on the name or is the number based on you know the status or rank? You know what? I don't even know. It's a good question. Yeah, I've, Johnny uh, would probably know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I know there's a 006 and and all that, and but I I think making it a mantle uh, would be kind of like a creative way to to show why we've had so many different 007s, why there's been Roger Moore, Craig Smith, uh, Roger Craig, Craig Smith? Uh, Roger no. Roger Craig Smith? No. Um, oh, Daniel Craig. They, there you go. It's Craig something. <laughs> no, uh, Ro- Roger Craig Smith is the voice <laughs> of Sonic. Uh, yeah. Pierce Brosman. Yeah. Uh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery, yeah. So I think that would be an interesting way to show it. And then you can have whoever you want to be 007. But if it has to be James Bond and James Bond, the character, is Caucasian, then I can see why people would be upset about this. Yeah, and I think that really stems from, like, this is how we know this character to be. Yeah. And, you know, not even just in pop culture, just people don't, human beings don't like change. It doesn't matter what it is. You can change your scenery, change your home, change your school, change your outfit. Like, some there's a lot of people that just don't like change. It's it's different. It's like, oh, uh, no, get out of my face. Yep. So, and that happens a lot more when it comes to pop cultures, movies, characters, video, especially video games. I, I, I think there there's a certain, uh, another level, as you said, people don't like change, but when it comes to pop culture and people who are passionate about about a thing and, and then it's changed, I think that kind of adds a level of, of not rage, but uh, of being upset. Um, pe- people are passionate about about comics and video games and movies and TV shows, and they like the characters. That's why they got in on, on that fandom is because the character is this way. And to change that, I think upsets a lot of people. And to honestly, to be completely honest, I, I understand why. I can understand that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, time out on passion. Uh, uh, I'll give my thoughts on uh, Idris Elba. I actually like Idris Elba a lot uh, as an actor. Uh, I think when you look at some of the the movies that he's in, just just him in a suit, like he has that he has that uh, suaveness about him. He has that uh, what's debonair. He what's what's the what's the the young kids term that they use? Swag. He's got that swag, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and you know James Bond is one who's a ladies' man. You know he has this sexiness about him, and he has this authenticity that he's able to romance women just by you know his his accent number one but also just kind of how he carries himself and i believe that is true to that character specifically amongst other things and i think idris elba has the ability to act in that manner not everybody can not everybody you know some people try but some people can't i think i think idris elba can actually pull that off uh, regardless of him, you know, being you know African American. Now, to your point on passion, I agree with you there. But also, there's the type of passion from the creative side 
or you have a passion for just the franchise, for the characters, that you want to maybe include a creative difference. And that can be in race, that can be in gender, that can be in some type of orientation. So we have to look at it at, at that side too. If we have a creative direct, direction that we want to go to, we want to change something because we have a different type of vision. Uh, why do people think that's not okay? Or do people actually not think about that, that there is a different type of creative side and it's just, it's about what we want, not about what they want to create. You bring up a good point and something actually relevant to this um, recent, somewhat recently is the new Thundercats, Thundercats Roar. We have talked about it before. We talked about this kind of new direction that animation has been going in the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy, I, I don't remember his name because I don't care to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it says that he's very he grew up on thundercats he loves thundercats mm-hmm. he's he's passionate about thundercats <sighs> to me being on the outside obviously you know i i see thundercats my own way i've i've also grown up with thundercats i can't see how someone who is a fan of thundercats would want to go in this direction with thundercats but a, again i'm i don't have a, a creative bone in my body kind of thing you know i, I don't see uh, the the potential in it, but I'm sure that he 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 must know what he's talking about because you know, Cartoon Network hired him, and you know he's give him he's a shot, give him some money, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I can I can understand wanting to change, I can understand wanting to shake things up to kind of breathe life into a franchise. To to I mean, th- think about God of War that just came out. They went in a completely new creative direction with that, and that 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 franchise has has blown up in a good way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I can see why you'd want to make change, why you'd want to revitalize uh, something. I I don't know. I think there's just a way. There's certain things maybe are are generally gen- generally uh, viewed as kind of like not the way you should go. Like making it cartoony and and kind of just uh, slapstick comedy kind of kind of a way. I don't see how that and Thundercats can be mixed. Yeah, and I I think it. I think it depends on the IP or what form of media. Because in your Thundercats example, for us that grew up with Thundercats, I think it's more of a nostal- partly nostalgic, but also we see Thundercats very specifically as this character, this theme, this art style, and anything different is just not normal for us. Yes. Where, um, again, I don't know his name either, but the guy who's running the new Thundercats Roar. He's such a big fan that he mentioned that there's going to be a lot of callbacks like as far as characters, villains, enemies, jokes that tie back into the original series that fans like us will acknowledge and you know will remember and at the same time make it new and fresh to appeal for audiences that didn't grow up with Thundercats. Yeah, so yeah. If, if you look at any kid that's right now that's between the ages of 6 and let's say 15, if they were to watch the Thundercats that we grew up with, they would probably be turned off on it based on everything that they're watching now. Yeah, and like the the just the aesthetics alone, it wouldn't look crisp. It wouldn't look new. It wouldn't look, you know, because it was it was back in the eighties kind of thing. Yeah. So I I don't I think that on its own, you know, so many kids are about graphics and, and exactly and, you know HD and four K and all I, that. I want someone somewhere to create some type of poll of kids between the age of six and sixteen. Like, have them watch any hand-drawn animation from the 80s and see if they like any of them <laughs> compared to everything that CG or um, just weirdly drawn. Yeah. I mean, just use a quick example before we get into some of the other core stuff. Look at Teen Titans Go. Completely different from what we grew up with with Teen Titans. Yeah. But it, stay, it still has that, that flair. It still has the comedy. It still has the jokes and the quirkiness. Just the art style is completely different. But all those characters are still true to what they were. They just look completely different based on the art style. Uh, I, I don't know. I'd argue a little bit a little bit of that slightly. The characters are... It, I mean, it's Robin. It's Starfire. It's Raven. But like in Teen Titans Go, Raven's a, a brony. You know, she, she loves... This I, f- I don't know what the show is, but it's some sort of My Little Pony show that oh, Raven that's, loves. Yeah, that's not Raven. Which is actually kind of funny because Tara Strong voices Raven and also voices Twilight Sparkle from My Little Pony. Okay, so it's kind of shared a, a universe. Um, but one thing I do want to actually say you, that you had brought up about Teen Titans Go is that 
yes, it's very different from the Teen Titans that we know. But when you when you kind of mention there, there are so many inside jokes and references and Easter eggs and callbacks to the DC universe like that on its own. I yes, that uh, a creator, the creators of Teen Titans go are passionate about DC. They are passionate about these characters and just being able to kind of make these jokes. Uh, it is a a funny and cool thing like that. I I I can see where the passionate stuff has come from. So maybe the Teen Titans roar. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> the Thundercats go. No, I'm kidding. Uh, the the Thundercats roar uh, show with its callbacks. M- maybe he knows what he's doing. Maybe he is truly a, a passionate fan of Thundercats. Yeah, and what what's I feel how I feel with that and everything else that we're also about to talk about. I think you have to give it a shot. I think you can't judge a book by its cover or judge what someone is trying to do as far as as far as a creative difference. So, I mean, looking at, you know, even, you know, a African-American, an African-American playing Bond, like it can be awesome. Yeah. It could be Idris. It could be a different African-American or, or it could be it, could, it doesn't even have to be a black actor. It could be it could be just a different type of ethnicity like. It's not what we're normally. It's not what we're used to as that character. But it doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean yeah. it's not going to work. And I think with these shows, with these you know actors, uh, with animation styles, I feel that we should give it a chance. I mean, just because we see it like a two second clip and it's just like, damn, that what did they do to my show? You got to You got to at least give it a shot to succeed. And if it doesn't work after that, then okay, then you can just talk bash it. Yeah, all that's the fair thing to do. Yeah. I'm probably not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, finally moving on. To yes, some other stuff. No, it's good stuff. No, it was good stuff. So uh, a couple of the things that had some specific backlash: uh, Starfire uh, in the Titans uh, upcoming show. Yeah, which was what uh, Showtime TNT? No, the no. Uh, well, I don't think we know exactly because that's uh, uh, Warner, might Warner be. Brothers might have their streaming service, and yeah. then some other type of network may pick it up. We don't know which yet. There's a lot of backlash. Um, I don't remember the actor, but she plays Starfire, and Starfire is being played by an African American woman. There's been a ton of backlash on her specifically because of the color of her skin, because that's not how Starfire is portrayed. Starfire actually has more orange skin, if anything. <laughs> yeah. But because of just the skin tone, there's a lot of pushback, and people are attacking not just the studio they're attacking her personally yeah that's when like they're taking shots at her i can understand the the outrage and the the outcry and all that but when you actually go to the actor or actress that's too far that's like they're they got a call to be a part of this they took the shot they want to be a part of it and just because you don't like where the the direction of the the director or, or wherever is going that's I don't think that gives you freedom to to harp on the the actor or the actress. No, it's it's not right, and I think I think it's a big problem, especially in in a world where you know you know you know in politics, especially where we have you know uh, a president that a lot of people think is dividing you know uh, as far as you know people and and nations, and you know we, we're just we're just belittling someone who's just trying to trying to find a job or trying to trying to work. Yeah, I mean. If you go into a restaurant and you don't like the food that they serve, do you do you talk smack about the restaurant? No, you just don't eat there. So, like if in this case, I feel if you don't support the creative choice rather than just bash the person that's playing the role, just don't go, don't watch the movie, don't watch the show. Like if if you don't like fighting games, you don't talk bad about fighting games. You just don't buy the fighting game. Eh, I don't know. I don't like racing games. I mean, do you buy racing games? <laughs> no. No, but do you talk bad about Mario racing Kart. games? Yes. Does that, that's that's More slightly so different. You're, Microsoft. It's, it's because you're, it's it's cause you're trolling because you specifically don't like Forza. But Forza. context, Garrett, we need a little context. So, yeah. so um, you know, another one that recently came up, uh, Batwoman. There's a Batwoman TV show coming to CW, and the, uh, the actress that's going to be playing that, uh, Ruby Rose, she got backlash. Um, to the point where she took a break from Twitter. Yeah, she she removed her Twitter account. And in this case, and you know a little bit more because you're into comics, uh, I didn't even know that Batwoman was a thing. And <laughs> yeah. that particular character is a lesbian in the comics. And she... Cassandra Cain. Mm-hmm, she, you know, enjoy, you know, dates, you know, in the same, you know, same sex. And 
Ruby Rose has came out as gay in her early childhood, and that's you know how she had identified herself. And she's received comments that she is t- either too gay for the role or she's not gay enough for the role. How, and how, how do you, you determine that? Yeah. Like, how, I mean, how do you determine that if someone is acting for a role? Like, yeah, first of all, that that notion that not gay enough or too gay to play a character that's dumb that they're they're actors that's literally their job is to play someone they are are not yeah leonardo dicaprio is not you know he's he's not still in the ocean he's not still jack holding on he's <laughs> he's he's an actor he's paid to do that that's what he does i mean even if you go back to brokeback mountain for example yeah you, know, you had jake gyllenhaal and heath ledger no one like criticized them for not being gay. Enough. Yeah, like you're you're not gay enough, so you you can't play a hetero you know, or a homosexual male in this movie because that's not who you are in the real world. That, you know? that would never. We would never have movies if if actors had to be the characters. We would never have movies. Never any good ones. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean that I, I I don't agree with it. I think it's I think it's a bad notion that we're willing to attack an individual when they're not responsible. Responsible. I mean, like like you mentioned, they're just trying to get hired for a gig. Someone else is having a creative difference, and we are are bashing more so the actors yeah. in these roles based on them portraying a character that someone else made a different creative decision yeah. on. But but even with this situation, like in this particular situation with Batwoman, there were no creative differences. There were no creative changes. That's. That that's is the, the character. character. That's yep. the the character Batwoman Cassandra Kane. She is a lesbian. That's there's that that wasn't changed for this show. That's the character. Yeah, you're not changing the sexual identity. You're not changing the gender. You're not changing her skin color. Like you're 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 casting somebody to play the character. That's literally it. And people are going, you can't be that character. Yeah, it's 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 really a sad world that you are living. What is what was the quote that she put before she uh, removed her Twitter? Um, if you need me, I'll be on the bat phone. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool that she, so, she kind of, kind of played off the, the role that she's going to be yeah, playing. So she, she's taking it in stride. Yeah. So a question is diversity for diversity's sake, a good thing. Or in other words, is it beneficial to change a character's likeness, appearance, personal personality, sexual orientation, etc., just to include them for diversity? That That's an, an interesting thing. Having a character, or I, I suppose more more actually changing a character to be gay or to be black or to be you know uh, handicapped or sorry uh, disabled in any way, yeah, that's to, for solely the fact that of inclusion. For solely the fact that you can say, oh yeah, we have a, a black person in the show. Oh yeah, we are representing the gay community. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I, I don't agree with changing a character to have that inclusion. Make a whole new character, I, I think, is is the best way to do it. Uh, but uh, it's weird. I don't know. It, it's a weird thing for me. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a fine line or a slippery, slipper, slippery slope. Say, I'm slipping. I can't even say it. Where it's, I understand that there there are people that want to make. You know, creative decisions and change, but to say that I'm only going to do this because it's not there, it's it's a hard line to cross. Because are you doing it for the right reasons, or are you doing it to just appease somebody because you don't want to look bad? Yeah, and I think that's a lot of times. I think it's just so the sole fact that you can say, "Oh, no, no, we have that. We we filled that quota." Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm not necessarily I'm not saying it's it's right or wrong, but if you're gonna do make a decision like that, I feel you should do it for the right reasons and not do it for anything that could potentially be the wrong reason. Yeah. So uh, strictly like a numbers game. Yeah, and something that you brought up, you know, you know, wrapping up this segment, there are situations where there has been creative changes that have worked or benefited the fan base. Um, and then there has been no outcry. There, people have not defended that they were all for it. So, go ahead and give the uh, the, the big example that you brought up. Uh, well, there there was one that was kind of a big uproar, and I think with um, the new comic series uh, in the, starting back in the New Fifty Two or in the New Flash show, is Wally West. Uh, they changed him from a Caucasian to black. 
that's uh, it, it, I mean it's kind of out there but they've also changed uh, Iris West you know she's she's black now mm-hmm. uh, so they, they've made these changes is it just to have black people there is it just to say you know do you truly want to change the character to make it uh, a I guess, yeah inclusive to, to add a black character there's no like real black characters in the Flash universe really uh, so that's that's one way to do it. Yeah, but that doesn't mean there's like n- no black people in, in, in that <laughs> universe. So I mean, and even you know, you, we were talking off air about you know even a little bit on it. You're talking about mantles and kind of passing the torch, where there's more than one Flash. Yeah, there's more than one Kid Flash. You know, those mantles do get passed on, and someone else does take up that role. So if you now add a different type of ethnicity into it, that doesn't necessarily take away from what has already been there. Yeah. You are passing on to the torch. And when you look at, you know, Wally, you know, Wally West being a different ethnicity, I, I, that's perfectly fine with me. I don't, I'm not, you know, against it if by any means, and especially being, you know, a fan of the flash. Yeah. It's my favorite superhero character. Yeah. Uh, th- there was one that I was kind of iffy about, uh, before Wonder Woman came out, Warner brothers up and down when we have to get a, a female director, to direct this movie has to be 100%. We can't do it. Man can't do it. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not one of those people that are like, Oh, women can't do what men, you know, anything men can do or anything like that. Absolutely not. But why, why did it have to be a female? Like that, that was like priority one. Like we got to get a female director. And I'm curious why is that just to say that, Hey, it's a, it's a movie about a woman. Let's get a woman. Is it like, hey, we we want to support female directors? You know, I don't know why Warner Brothers did that. But to shut up me and any of the other naysayers, Wonder Woman to this day is still the highest grossing DC, sorry, world of DC, uh, their new cinematic universe or new title for cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. It's the highest grossing film in that universe. And didn't that... uh I'm terrible with names in the in the movie room. Didn't that female director win either an Oscar or she won an award? She got like best director in one of those categories. There you go. So um, so she does know what she's doing. Mm-hmm. And then you know some other other creative changes. You know, weirdly enough, you know Electro just had this weird. You know, uh, Jamie Foxx played that character in Amazing, Amazing Spider Man Two. Yeah, and just it has nothing to do with the actor. It's just Elect Electro just. He just looked like a sparking light bulb that was ready to blow up. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why. And he, he his weapon was uh, dubstep. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> that kind of creative change. You're just like, yeah, you tried, but no. And then, you know, one that I like that you brought up, um, you know, uh, Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, yeah. had a scenario where she got crippled. The killing joke. Uh, Kit- yeah, this is one of the scenarios where uh, the creative differences and, and I guess inclusion um, – was actually a good thing, uh, in my opinion. Crippling uh, Barbara Gordon and having her be it so that she cannot be Batgirl anymore. She can't go out and, and jump over rooftops and fight crime uh, the way that she used to. She adopted a whole new persona. She became the Oracle, who was the that person, that guy in the chair, you know, that uh, was able to hack anything, give Batman any information he needed, uh, and I, I think that was really cool for the character, not only to to have not only to have a character that you know uh, disabled people can can go hey cool you know bat uh, bat girls now still doing doing the thing still fighting crime in her own way, but it, I thought it was a really cool way for Barbara Gordon and how her character uh, could be developed by her going through this traumatic experience mm-hmm. and being able to come out on top and to essentially do better than what she was at before, you know, and that, that I think is a, is a really cool thing to be able to use that and make it, you know, turn into a big plus in my opinion. Yeah, I'm definitely right there with you. And there are definitely other creative changes that, that definitely help whether, you know, regardless of what the change is where, you know, fans do like the change and, you know, we definitely want to support, 
uh, the directors, the actors, the people that are behind the scenes because they're creating all this content for us. And even though we don't like it or may not like it all the time, there's definitely a lot a lot more good out there than there is a bad. And you know, we could argue that either way. But there's definitely stuff out there that, that we can enjoy. And I would say if, if you enjoy something, definitely continue to support them. Buy the film, watch the movie, purchase the game. If you support them, let them know. You know, send them a tweet, you know, watch the movie. And if if you don't support it, you know, just don't watch it. You know, you don't, don't have to be a you don't have, about Yeah, you don't have to bash him and be just a terrible human being. You don't have to be a griefer <laughs> in the real world. Get a bounty. All right, cool. So if uh, it, was, it was a good topic, yeah. you know, we had a lot of a lot of good points on there. So uh, if you guys uh, listening out there have any thoughts, feedback, anything you want to kind of give us a rebuttal on, definitely hit us up on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, our email. All right, guys, it's time for my favorite segment. The Speed Run. Each week, we'll break down seven new stories and facts that just didn't quite make the cut for a segment. We've got one minute per topic before we move on to the next, finished or not. Gotta go fast. Uh, In the Speed Run. Like, all right, man, this is not my job. This is not what I do. That's what I got. Right? (laughs) Fortnite is now available on Android devices for the first time. But it is currently exclusive to the Samsung Galaxy devices, the S7 or higher, the Note 8, the upcoming Note 9, the Tab S3, and the upcoming Tab S4. So there's a lot of Android devices out there, but Samsung is getting more likely a timed exclusiveness on this game. Well, is, isn't, isn't Fortnite already on Apple, though? Yes, but not everybody has an iPhone. No, Android being, you know, Samsung, LG, and, you know, the yeah. other platform, so to speak, for, for mobile devices. Yeah, but how is it timed exclusive? If- for for Android devices. So this is exclusive oh. to Samsung devices. Oh. No LG, no Motorola, or any other okay. type of devices that support the Android operating system. Okay, okay. Well, good, good, good on you, you droid, droidies. <laughs> yeah, Samsung is, is, a, is a probably the biggest Android you know, cell phone supplier. Yeah, and, and, and probably the world. So, I mean, it's great that Fortnite. I mean, I don't care for Fortnite personally. It's great that it's still like getting massive hits. Oh, we, oh, okay. The upcoming Showtime Halo TV series will star Master Chief in the leading role. This show will have a new storyline while respectfully keeping the current Halo story canon as much as possible. So, that could mean anything. It could. <laughs> I mean, you can't have Halo without Master Chief for the most part if you want to draw attention to yeah, it. Yeah, they tried. It didn't work. Yeah, I mean, ODST, eh, Reach was cool. Reach was bad. But it, it was a direct... But Master Chief was in it. Yeah, he was. Very I was going to say, he, it's a prequel <laughs> story, and you see him at the video, so technically it's, it's a game that he's in. But the fact that you're going to create a new story around Master Chief that's not what it looks like not going to tie into anything that's previously been done that'll be interesting yeah what choices can you make like is microsoft breathing down your neck saying no you can't do that because future plans or because this is not something master chief would do like where can you really go i mean is it in between halo 1 2 or 3 is it post halo 7 like now that we know he's in it like is it a side story is it his dreams? Only time. Next. Sony Brass is pushing for the upcoming Venom film to be PG-13 instead of rated R. Wait, are, are we are we reading that right? So is it already slated as rated R? Yes, and they're pushing for it to be PG-13, oh, which I is normally not the that. case. Usually you either want to flip it yeah. you're, or you're trying not to get it to be rated R because you want to reach a specific audience. Yeah. But they're, they don't want it to be rated R. And I don't know why. It, I don't know why it's rated R already. I didn't even know it was already rated R. I, maybe because maybe the language. Maybe there is a certain amount of violence. Maybe there is a certain amount of gore. I don't know. It's weird because when I think rated R heroes or anti-heroes or characters from Marvel, it's Deadpool and Logan. That's that's it for me. That's that's all I got. Venom uh, being a villain, yeah, of course, do some villainous things, but it doesn't have to be R-rated. You don't yes. have to rip arms off. Yes, which I think they I mean, in the trailer, they showed him, it looked like he was about to eat a dude in the grocery store. Yeah, have, have that part, but maybe just don't, you know, off... Next! 
Star Trek's current generation film number four may be in jeopardy. Alex, Trebek, <laughs> Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth, the Chris's, uh, <laughs> Chris Squared, Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth may not be starring in the new film. Yeah, so I don't think you can have this generation's Star Trek franchise move forward without Chris Pine. He is the Kirk of this generation. I mean, unless you're going to reboot the series again. I, Why would if, you do that? If something, I, I mean, I guess if if something happens with the contract or whatever, or Chris Pine just really doesn't want to be part of it for whatever reason, I, I guess you can maybe mess around with the time travel stuff and say, oh, yeah. this is Chris Pine from the other dimension that's filling in for old Chris Pine. Yeah, or just have a no, a, he had a twin brother, or I don't know. Some, you can't have a, yeah, I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. But yeah, and then Chris Hemsworth, I mean, daddy role. I mean, he was going to be a flashback. Did he really die? Yeah. yeah. My guess is he, he would be uh, uh, from another dimension or from another time thing. Like yeah. Kirk's dad from another point in time. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. Next. Capcom is releasing an exclusive Bluetooth typewriter keyboard as a collector's item for the upcoming Resident Evil 2 remake in Japan. It's an awesome typewriter. You got to look it up. This typewriter will cost about $675, and that's not including tax. Okay, I got a couple couple of things. This is a cool typewriter. This is like a oh, oh, keyboard. It's, it's not, a it's keyboard, not a but it just it looks like the Resident Evil 2 typewriter. Which is really cool. Yep. Um, is it only in Japan? Right now, it's only set to release in Japan. Of course. And then there is a collector's edition that comes with like ink ribbons, comes with a Leon Kennedy statue and That's some other stuff cool. for like nine hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. You're like, is the game two hundred dollars? I wonder what the highest collector's edition. Not not a collector's item that you know that someone has kept over the years to resell. But yeah. what is the highest? I guess day one collector's edition because I think Assassin's Creed had a really expensive one too. Origins, I think it was like maybe six hundred. Yeah, I don't know, but this is ridiculous. I mean, what's 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 in that keyboard, man? Is it like a bunch of cool shortcuts? Is it lights? I mean, the ability to save and put a checkpoint in your life. Yeah, that's worth six hundred and seventy-five dollars. One Punch Man season two has been announced with an April twenty nineteen release date. You mean One Punch Man, as you say? Yeah, yeah, I meant to, to do that after I said One Punch Man. Sorry, I saw your thunder. No, 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 I forgot to. So, <laughs> so I'm glad that you brought it up. So I, I put this uh, <laughs> on our Facebook and got some, some feedback on it. And then my brother was like, oh, my God. Because that's how he says oh that. Oh, my God. Yep. Uh, and he asked me if I saw it. And I was like, I've seen the last episode. Like, like just the last just episode? Just the last episode. I went over to Ricky's house, a buddy of mine, and it was just it happened to be on. I was just watching it. The hell, man! I know it's spoiled. Why would you spoiled watch everything. the last episode? Like, it was just on TV. You know, you go to someone's house and you just watch what they watch. But uh, I know a lot of people are excited for this. It's been a long, a longer time coming. So I definitely, I mean, well, you haven't even watched it, have you? I am maybe three episodes in. That's more than me. Better than me. I mean, I know the ending. <laughs> I st- uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, April's not Maybe that you're far away. Than me. Uh, you know the ending. Uh, tsh, yeah, just, we can collaborate and figure it out. <laughs> April's not that far away. So, notes. so it's you know, hopefully the animation's really great. Looking forward to uh, next. Damn. Marvel Studios is celebrating its 10 year anniversary by re releasing all of its 20 MCU Marvel films in IMAX theaters between August 30th and September 6th. This is really cool for the fact that if you want to watch any of these MCU films, you can re-watch it in a big, badass movie theater experience. Will MoviePass support this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I highly doubt it because they don't support IMAX. Ah. Ah. And we don't... But I bet the AMC A-list. Maybe. Probably. I mean, it's... And the way I read it, over this week, it's, it's not going to be a marathon-like. You'll be able to see four or five movies one day, four or five movies the next day, and so on and so forth. So I think that the first movies is going to be Incredible Hulk, Iron Man, and Captain of the, uh, Captain Avenger. Captain, Captain Avenger. America, the first <laughs> Avenger. The first uh, America. I mean, it's a cool way to do it, so you can kind of relive the movie theater experience if you don't have the crazy 80-inch surround sound TV like, some, uh, like one of my close Somebody. friends has. Uh, we will set that up soon. Um, and drink lots of beer. Yeah, that, that's another thing, too. You know, you can you know watch this, you know. And. Oh, damn. Well, that's the speed run, everybody. 
Of course, if you have any other topics or anything else you want to mention, hit us up, social media, and our email. All right. It's time to talk about how we've been doing. So we're going to give each other... The super power. You, you, str- you nervous? This is dino mutt. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at the end of the show, we talk about what's going on with us outside the podcast and give each other stupid superpowers for good or for bad. I don't know, Blue Falcon. Uh, this is dino mutt. Uh, Blue Falcon. <laughs> this is thing. Uh, better than Droopy? I don't know. Droopy's pretty cool, but dino mutt has a whole bunch of cool g- gizmos and gizmos are cool. Gizmos are very cool. Okay, so uh, should I go first or you want to go first? Let's see. It's usually Johnny because he, he said chooses it. one of us. Okay, uh, uh, we'll just keep it the same. You know, I don't want him coming back and just be like, "Why'd you guys take up with the order and you screwed everything up?" So uh, we were gone. I was gone for a week, and then uh, apologize for those that didn't get an episode last week. Yeah, I know I was gone. You guys, I was told that you guys were pretty busy and we just wasn't wasn't able to. Uh, Things were happening. Things yeah. are happening that you will hear more about in the future. Yeah, when everybody's here. When Every, everybody's here. Every, we, everybody, will, everyone will get an update. After we go to another castle and find our princess, Johnny. So, so, so he went back to the past and sent a letter specifically for next week's date, just like in Back to the Future 2, when Marty gets that letter from Doc. Are you or, kidding me, Doc? <laughs> are you telling me it's 8 a.m.? <laughs> so um, I went to... Damn! <laughs> So uh, I went to Evo in uh, Vegas. Uh, it was fun. I didn't. I missed both my time slots, so I didn't get to compete this year at all. Nope. That sucks. We didn't get there till seven p.m. Traffic sucked. And normally it's a you know an average four hour trip, four and a half if on a bad trip. It took us seven hours to get there. It it was it was dumb. Just people just don't know how to drive. I don't Damn. like. There's no accidents. Yeah. Just, I mean, yeah, sure, there's hills and a little bit of wind, but if there's no act, like, not a single car was in an accident on the way there, but somehow people had to stop where we took us almost two and a half times to get there. I don't get it. Yeah. I really don't. Well, so, at least the, the experience was still there, right? Yes, it was. Uh, Sunday's finals was fun as usual, but it's, it's just tiring because you're just sitting there and spent $40 on food because everything costs like 10 bucks, and you want a drink, you got to buy a $4 bottle of water or a four fifty soda. Jeez. Yeah, it's dumb. But, uh, you know, Smash well, Brothers... I think you mean that the other way around, because usually water is more expensive than uh, yeah, soft sometimes. drinks, just because, you know. Yeah, there were some really cool announcements. Um, Cooler was announced in Dragon Ball Fighters. Sonic Fox ended up winning. Nice. Controversial win, because really? he, he lost um, in a reset bracket, I believe. And then was it because they switched ports or something? No, like no, he wanted the player one slot, so he lost to Goichi, and then um, he got sent to losers. And as he was going back into grand finals from the loser side, Goichi was already on player one slot, and um, Sonic Fox was losing. And then he decided to flip a coin to switch seats, so it was like a five to ten minute time gap. And they flipped a coin, and he won. So he got to sit in player one, and totally killed the momentum of Goichi in that match. So it was it was kind of a dick move, in my opinion. I don't know. I, I think it's it's fair that he waited till after the the bracket reset to then go like, okay, maybe maybe give me a turn at player one. Yeah, I I can't. I think it was in. I don't remember if he was in winners or losers. No, he was in winners, and then Goichi reset the bracket, and then he wanted to switch chairs. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's how it went. Uh-huh. So, but yeah, and then Tekken Seven had a couple of announcements. Negan is a guest character in the future it's of Tekken Seven. Hell. But I, don't worry, I'm gonna get that season pass for my girl Mia, <laughs> the Tekken Emperor. If you're listening, you're, you're awesome. <laughs> I hope you're listening. That'd be cool. Um, and then Smash Melee. Uh, that's when they announced the Smash Direct that uh, okay. uh, we've already uh, you know passed. And then uh, Soul Calibur Six, uh, Astaroth, and uh, Song Mina got revealed. Oh man, those new characters. Yeah, those new characters of old. Um, so that was cool. So it was a fun time. I actually got a couple uh, some cool props there. I got a, a bead uh, pixel art. So I, I told Johnny yesterday, spoiler alert for both of you, but I got something for both of you guys. Oh. So it's being shipped. So oh. I'll probably get in maybe about a week because I didn't want to carry it back and put it in my car with all the luggage. So okay. I got something for both of you guys. Dude, thanks. And then I got a badass like something that I got for me that I'm going to show you guys <laughs> there when you it comes go. in. Uh, besides, right? Besides that, I'm trying to trying to finish off, <laughs> not in a killing way. Uh, Octopath Traveler, 
But when I play it after I get off work, I'm just knocking out within like 10 minutes of playing that game. I've just been so busy with work and, you know, coming back from Evo. I just, I'm just trying to get through that game. I think I'm like 50 hours in, something like that. I'm not sure. Um, and, you know, I'm still liking it, still enjoying it. But it, but it's different now because finishing the storylines, like I'm already at a high level. I'm already like my main character is past level 60 and catching up in like story missions. That's level 35 and level 40. Yeah, I heard, of, I heard it's very easy to over level yourself. Yeah, just because you're exploring and doing RPG like stuff. So um, I've been, you know, playing that. Um, haven't been playing much else. Street Fighter was awesome. They announced G and Sagat. And it was probably the best, in my opinion, the best reveal. The most interesting reveal is Terry Bogart got announced for EX Fighting Lair, as well as there's a female version of Terry Bogart in okay, so SNK that, that, Heroines. So that wasn't a rules 64 thing, or I think it's 34. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. No, they, they made a female Terry Bogart for the SNK oh, Heroines okay. game. Okay. And then he got announced for uh, Akira's EX Fighting Lair game. All right. But G and Sagat, both trailers back-to-back were announced for the last two characters in Season 3. Mm-hmm. And then they announced they were both coming in August, and then they announced they were coming out the next day. <laughs> like it was like boom, here you go. Like there you go. Damn, that, that was that's, that's that was cool an awesome reveal. That's cool. It really did. was. Sagat nice. came out with a tiger in his intro, like an actual tiger. That's, so that that's, was cool. That's what he does. So that's me. That's my week. All right. It's cool. So Garrett, your superpower. Uh-huh. I I need something. Let me take something. Okay, I got something. Do you like beat art? Like the pixel beat art? Like you see people wearing the necklaces yeah, and stuff neat. like that? Yeah. Okay. I like so, guessing what the characters are. Okay. So you have the ability where you can take any, any pop culture item. It can be you know, from a comic book. It can be a toy. It can be from a video game. You have the ability to instantly create something of a pop culture reference as beat art, as pixel beat art. So you can wear it as a necklace. You can create it as like a wall mount. You can somehow create like a 3D sculpture of a, I don't know, 3D Link or Donkey Kong, Pixel Beat, what like 3D dot game heroes in gotcha. real life, but with Pixel Beats. Gotcha. So All right. That's your that's your stupid power. I'll make so much money. Yeah, you probably, <laughs> you probably would. You gotta share some with that. I give you the bar. <laughs> Royalty checks. All right. Uh, moving on to uh, my weeks. I'll kind of clump them together. Um, so last week, a game that we had the pleasure of playing at, uh, PlayStation Experience came out of 2017, 20, 2016, because I think we missed last year's, um, Chasm. Oh, oh, I totally forgot that came out. Yep. Chasm came out, uh, pretty damn fun. It's, it's Metroid. The Metroidvania, it, yeah. it's 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 a Castlevania like for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. More than Metroid. Um, love the 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 weapons and the exploring. There's there's mechanics in it that that are a lot of fun. Nothing nothing like crazy new, but it's it's just funny. There was a puzzle in it that you have to to explore and look at rooms to to get the clues okay. it, it doesn't tell you there's nothing that you click on or anything it's like oh i'll add this to my clue thing you it's it's, it's it literally like oh okay this is an interesting room and then you leave <laughs> <laughs> so that that was a, a little fun gimmick um unfortunately i only played it for a week because last week because you beat it no oh, okay dead cells came out uh, I haven't watched any gameplay on that besides the initial gameplay reveal. I, this was some time ago. I think you would really like this game, Joshua. It's getting pretty pretty good reviews. Yeah, some not so authentic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> one guy lost his job because of his review. <laughs> R.I.P. Uh, dude, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bash him. Yeah, um, but that game is a lot of fun. It's not my kind of game. It's not your cup of tea, but you like it. Well, it, it's not. It's not a game that I would usually be interested in. It's there's actually some things I, w- I would like to change about it, but that's the reason why you come back. Are you talking specifically gameplay? Y- yes. Yes. Specifically gameplay. Um, you will die in this game. And when you die it, you reset there. There's no like, Oh, I got a checkpoint at the third level, so I respawn at the third level and just kind of re- you know retry. It's game over. Start start from the beginning. 
Yeah, because it is a roguelike. Yes. You, you know, die, you start over. Yep. Uh, but each run is so different because you get random weapons. And depending on what weapons you have, that's like your loadout. And it's like, okay, so this is what I'm, what I, what I got. All right, All right I'll let's, try. Let's, let's see how far I can go. <laughs> exactly. And so, uh, you you go around killing uh, killing enemies, monsters, and all that. And every now and then they'll drop a blueprint. Uh, these blueprints, if if you survive and get to the end of the level, which isn't always you know Mario get from point A to point B. Sometimes you have to you know explore and maybe go down uh, go down to the lower levels to find the exit. And if you make it to the exit with the blueprints, uh, you go to a guy called the collector and. That that's like added to your unlockable uh, uh, items. Okay, but you only unlock items by investing souls into them. So say like uh, you'll get a new sword, and it says zero out of fifty, or it just says fifty. Um, you need to put in fifty souls, which is oh, sorry, not souls, cells, cells, uh, which is something that you'll get at random. It's the currency. It's mm-hmm. not like whenever you, it's not like Dark Souls where oh I kill someone I get twenty souls. It's like yeah. I kill someone oh okay I, I get some money this time okay nice oh okay I killed that guy that guy gave me a, a cell. Uh, if you die you lose all your cells. There's there's no like reclaiming your body kind of thing like it's it's addictive. It's it's tough, challenging, and addictive. Okay, and it it rewards uh, speed running. I guess if. The, the dungeons are randomly generated, so it's not the same every time. But there's these t- kind of timer doors that uh, are able to be un- opened if you get to them quick enough. Okay. And it'll let you know. Like, say, if, if you're too late, it'll say, oh, this door was sealed off 30 seconds ago. And so you, you know, like, oh, okay, uh, what, what could, well, I, what could I, I have it. done faster? Right. You know, kind of thing. Uh, a lot of fun. I'm playing on my Switch, uh, so I got it on the go. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, I guess the only thing that I would change, which is what I was saying is counterintuitive to the game design is I wish that when you unlock these weapons, you were able to choose them for each of your runs, right. like choose your loadout. Basically it's completely random every time, which is part of the fun of it. But, um, so you, now it's unlocked where it can be an extra item that's randomized. It, it's when you unlock a blueprint, it's now able to be random a, a, a random drop part of your random inventory exactly gotcha exactly uh so i think you would like this this game uh quite a lot is it on xbox it's on xbox it's on playstation it's on yeah. steam it's on switch it's my preferred method because of controller and big tv yeah nice I'm uh, definitely I, gonna check it out soon i also watched a movie called ready player one have you not seen it this whole time i've not seen it this whole time bought it last week and then just got to it yesterday. Sorry, we were going to do a review on it, but we didn't. We didn't because I don't think I watched it. Uh, you didn't watch it, and I think Johnny was just like, it's not as good as the book, so I don't care for the movie. That sounds like Johnny. I'm pretty sure he said that, or something close to it. <laughs> he can defend himself if he comes back. Yeah, maybe. He will return. That'll be, that'll be the tagline at the end of our show. Johnny will return. <laughs> Very much uh, like they said that in the end of the event, uh, yeah. Avengers credits. yeah. Um, I like that movie. I like that movie a lot. Did you read the book? No. Or audio book? Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't read it and I didn't listen to it. Okay. Because that's not reading. Uh, yeah, we can debate about that. <laughs> Felix. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I thought it was, it was really entertaining. It was not what I expected. And I think that's a good thing. There's so many references. I saw Tracer three times. Three? That was cool. Because in the same fight? Or no, no. She's in, like, throughout the movie. the movie. Throughout the movie. There's Tracer. No, oh, there's Tracer again. Ah, oh, there's music again. That was Tracer. I would uh, rather, rather than try to watch it 20 times, I'd rather just have someone show me or create an article of all the Easter eggs in there. I'm sure, I'm sure th- those are out there. I do want to watch it again just to see who I, who I might have missed. missed. I, I know I've missed so many of them, but... Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of cool ones. I don't want to say any just because spoiler reasons are, are just, it's We're not even that. like, it's not even, Came I know, but it's, <laughs> it's not even like story. It'll ruin the story. Like the, it's like the like, big one. What's, are you, the big one the big at one? the end, like the big, big one at the end. Well, like the big, the big, there's the big one that was in the previews. Big and machine. Then there's the big one that was not 
in the previews mm-hmm. and not in the trailers. Are you are you talking? Are are you the, which big one are you talking? Because there's two anime. Okay, all right. Because right. that one was not in the trailers, right? That one, to my knowledge, was not in the trailers. Correct. Yeah, that one. Nor was, was the one that that one was fighting. Yeah, yeah. That and, and it was cool funny because you, you can hear the music. Like I heard the music when that showed up. And I'm like, that's the music to da da da. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's a thing. Yep. So yeah, uh, that, that was a very fun movie. I don't know if they can. I, I mean, it's Hollywood, so they can. Mm-hmm. You know, make a sequel. <laughs> I, I would I be interested to see it. I don't think they'll get one. But um, it's Hollywood. Yeah, They it can is. do it. I mean, if they can tell us they're going to give us live action like Gundam and Aladdin and whatever else. Look, Sony is bent on making a Spider-Man cinematic universe without Spider-Man. I think Hollywood can make... By the way, did you hear... Okay, okay. So there was going to be a movie called Silver and Black which was going to be Silver Sable and Black Cat. Okay. Sony has scrapped that, and instead, they're going to make two movies. They're going to make a Silver Sable movie and a Black Cat movie. And then another movie where they're together. And then maybe they'll make Silver and Black. I just don't see how they're going to make so many movies. Craven the Hunter. Craven's getting a movie. How are you going to make all these movies without Spider-Man? They're not. (laughs) I don't think so. We'll see how Venom does. Spider-Man's in... And with the other guys, <laughs> with, with Marvel, <laughs> under Roos. maybe they'll have a different version of Spider Man. Can I, they do that? I, I, Does Disney have the rights to all Spider Man? I, I would assume now. Now that they've acquired Fox, I would assume now they do. If they don't, then you, Ben Riley would be pretty cool. Uh, Scarlet Spider Man. Yeah, that'll be. Interesting. I like Scarlet Spider Man. A that'll lot of people a, don't. That'll be a new topic. All right, Joshua. Yep, your superpower. Sorry, stupor power. Yeah, we don't do superpowers here. You have the power, whenever you want, yeah. to make a hot beverage. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you any whatever hot beverage you enjoy, <laughs> you can make. You it. had to do this when Johnny wasn't here. <laughs> like he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna die r- laughing listening uh, to this. It'll be a nice surprise in Bowser's castle. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a hot beverage? No, but my boy Joshua does. <laughs> Anytime he wants. Which one would you like? I don't, know, I don't like any of them. Just Johnny would be like, you know what? Can you just can you just make me one? Can can you be my slave for one week? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's Sean. <laughs> Come on, man. Everything I've done for you, I just want a hot chocolate. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can uh, you you can make any hot beverage you'd like. At any time. I'm going to stand in front of a Starbucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would you rather go in the Starbucks or get some whatever from this man standing outside? It's going to taste better just because I can create it out of thin air and I'll sell it for a dollar cheaper. Yeah, there you go. Have there my own go. stand. Cool. Have your own stand? Where Are you, go, are you going like Starbucks stand or are you going JoJo Bizarre Adventure? I'm thinking like like Charlie like, Brown. Okay, okay. I was going anime with it. Sorry. Or Lucy, whatever kind of lemonade stand, but... Hot beverage stand. No, no, she was a psychiatrist. She gave a... Well, she was still a stand. (laughs) That's where I was getting at. All right, all right. All right, everybody, that is our episode for the day. Uh, The bro-op number two. Bro-op number two. The uh, 189 times two. (laughs) 89.2. Point point five and a half. So uh, we want to thank you very much for listening and tuning in. Uh, Of course, we should be back to our normal schedule uh, time starting with this upcoming episode. And then we actually, uh, we're still going to do the uh, the the special episode. I am so wanting to do the special episode. All right, so we're going to do another bro-op episode, but we're going to be talking specifically about the Super Smash Brothers Direct. So look for that episode to come out in the near future. If you are big into Smash Brothers, you don't want to miss it. So uh, a couple things, of course, uh, if you check us out on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, anywhere that you listen to us, give us a review. I'm not going to tell you five stars, but I hope you give us five stars. Let us know what you think. The feedback is very important uh, for us, and we always want to do things to help improve the show and make it uh, more fun and better for your uh, listening pleasure. Uh, you could also shoot us an email, and again, apologize for that, but we're going to get that up and running and fixed tune, uh, soon. Contact at scspodcast.com. Net. You can hit us up on social media. We have uh, the Edge, IG, Instagram. I said oh, Edge. That, I said with? Edge. Okay. Yeah, Ig, the Iggy. No, I, I just think people just call it Instagram or Insta. Yeah, the Gram. 
Telegram, old school gram, whatever. You know us on the gram. Uh, Facebook, just look us up, Super Co-op Squad. You know, look us up on Twitter. Feel free to reach out to us on uh, any of those mediums. Uh, on Twitter, you can find me at Eternal Red Gamer. And you can find me at GJL327. And uh, if you want to uh, tweet Mr. Johnny Mac to let him know if he's okay, it's at Johnny Mac24. Sure. <laughs> it's like we don't even know. Bowser's bitch now. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to have Peach on our next episode. <laughs> they, they did a, uh, a roll swap. Uh, that would be cool. That, that would be cool. Cool. So other than that, we're going to let you guys go. Thank you again for listening. I am Joshua Gerard. And I'm Gary Laney. And we hope to see Johnny Mac and you all next time. Bro, up out. Latest. <laughs>